channel member David B said this box is for me. So I want to crack this box of Star Wars Unlimited. And yes, we're going to use David's shipping box to open the box. And then I want to have a conversation about why I believe Star Wars, the Star Wars Unlimited TCG, fills a niche in the space that's not currently being met by other major TCGs. So it's talking about the game's long-term viability and why I believe it's going to stick around. And of course, for Mythic channel member David, we have the Mythic Championships playmat. So join me in this box open today. I hope you guys have fun. And let's discuss this niche that I think Star Wars is fulfilling. Where do, let's leave the packs in the box this time. Let's try that out for size. I really and truly believe that Star Wars fits a space that we haven't seen super healthy in trading card games in some time. And having a conversation with my friend Louie from the Made the Zuby With You podcast, who is, despite, you know, popular belief, not my only hope, I believe that Star Wars Unlimited fits the space of a competitive player's second TCG as we open Jin Erso. And why is something like that important in 2024? Well, First and foremost, Magic the Gathering, let's be honest, let's call it as it is. While it may be the largest trading card game, has done a couple things recently. It has, it has angered its community as we get the Leo, ooh, the, we're getting the hyperspace variant a lot right away in the leader section. So it has dropped the ball in certain aspects of its uh, a care for its community, if you will. And also it has... Well, let's just say it hasn't taken the competitive scene by storm as much as some of us would have liked it to. And while we all like to think that the only way to play TCGs is Commander, I will almost always push back against that and say that there is plenty of space. Ooh, we have something in the back of this pack. The Heroic Sacrifice and the bombing run hyperspace foil there's tons of space for good one-on-one -on -one tcg gameplay and that's been a space that hasn't necessarily been as fulfilled in recent years as it had in the past now some indie games have stepped up and tried to take a bit of that mantle and done a fine job for a certain amount of time but sooner or later a major company with serious backing and an ip that's going to draw a lot of eyes was going to step into that scene as we have a massive hit the luke skywalker we got the luke skywalker the first one we've pulled on the channel let's go look at the condition highly playable card you love to see it come out of this box as we talk about why this fits you know the gameplay competitive niche in the space so as we were saying I, I think that seeing something come along and, and really step up into that position has not only been healthy for tcgs as a whole but it it fills a need and then that's something we've talked about in the past with these up and coming trading card games whether they're backed by oh my <laughs> oh my gosh whether they're <laughs> i can't even I can't even hold on. So we got the Boba Fett. We got the Luke. Sorry, Boba Fett. Boba Fett. And we have the Hyperspace Foil Wampa. What a card. David B off to a rockin' start. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, wow. If, if you were here and you were really looking forward to like a continuous conversation, let me know in the comment section below. Maybe I'll make a second standalone video because right now we are all off base. As we look at the Saw Gerrera and the Stormtrooper Lieutenant. So not only does it fill that niche from, you know, a one-on-one -on -one gameplay. Something that's been lacking in the community. But it also does so, like we said, with the backing of a very serious IP and company. And there's a reason that's important. Can Oops, sorry, we are off the screen. The Seventh Sister. Can that be done, you know, without the backing of a major IP in a serious company? Absolutely. But there are benefits where you get to skip some steps. You get... Oh my gosh, all the iconic characters in this box. You get to skip some steps when you have an IP like this. Much like Disney Lorcana, you get the ability to be in front of so many more eyes right off the bat with no questions asked just because you put Star Wars on the box. And getting in front of more eyes is extremely important when it comes to the launch of a trading card game. I think we've all experienced this at some point that something that we know or love maybe, ooh, 
the Cité, something that we know or love maybe wasn't as popular either in our area or with our peer group or something of that, with something of that notion, and because of that, we weren't able to enjoy it as much. And with something like a TCG, we really need you know, the rest of our community around us to also embrace the trading card game because we need more people to play the game. We need other people to be willing to buy cards. We need other people to be willing to build decks, to discuss strategies as we see the command center. And that's important. And uh, having a strong IP, even if, you know, you don't like modern Star Wars, you do like modern Star Wars, having that strong IP is just it gives you a leg up in that aspect it also gives you a leg up in another aspect and that's sales it's something that we often struggle with as a community these tcgs are you know they're run by businesses and yes they may be run by people who love the trading trading card game as we see command another legendary already out of this box as we see you know people may love their game they may be hyper passionate about it but at the end of the day it definitely still is a business and for that reason you have to get this exposure and you know earn that money honey if you will stuff like that i think uh, only helps Helps games like this as we get the K2SO couple dollar rare that we see in this box with the Wilderness Fighter and it helps us kind of stick in that niche because it's more about just hitting that niche we've seen a lot of games uh what is it uh, One Piece would be a great example, a game that came out recently. It's really filling the competitive play niche. It has a powerful IP, but the company is maybe not printing oh, another couple dollar rare there. Maybe not printing as many boxes as some of us would have liked. It's harder to access. You can't get in the front door and there are other problems. And because of that, you don't really get to fill that space as you know, prominently as you may want to. And Star Wars is doing a great job of kind of dodging some of those pro problems. We saw early price spikes where I did a video on the channel. And then after that, things have been relatively stable. And again, all of these things are important to kind of fill that niche. But there is a risk there as well. It's not just all fun and games once you have filled that niche. You are everyone's, you know, second trading card game at this point. And to be, to, ooh, 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 hold on. We got the Count Dooku into the hyperspace foil. Oh, the asteroid sanctuary. There's kind of a, I don't know if you can see this. There's kind of a print line, like right down the middle of that asteroid sanctuary. Wild, that print line is just literally splitting the card right down the middle there. So there's, it's like we were saying, it's not all just upside. The risk is you're someone, you're the second trading card game. So you are subject to people's first favorite trading card game or the main thing that they spend their money on having a re release that coincides with yours. You could be in a situation where one of your products doesn't do so well and now you've lost more people because they can get their TCG itch elsewhere. But again, you know, you offset a bit of that by embracing the Star Wars IP, pulling at people's heartstrings and doing what other TCGs, especially something like Magic, is currently not doing as well. And that's giving us, you know, the hit to our feels, if you will, when we play the trading card game. Ooh, there's another hyperspace foil back here. Let's go. Let's go. Blaze for a cause I believe in. And the repair. Repair. Still a hyperspace foil, still sleeve worthy because they are pretty rare and pretty hard to come by. So all in all, I like the space. I like the idea behind something like Star Wars Unlimited, what it's doing for the community. But do you think that this is a viable position for a game like this? Do you think this is something that you know we could see Star Wars continue to do? Are they going to have to expand into that commander-like gameplay? Are we going to have to find something to fit that crowd and fill those needs? Or can this exist as that beautiful one-on-one -on -one competitive play admiral akbar it's a trap and the general right in the back there what do you think let me know in the comment section below we are two packs left we are down to the last two packs ladies and gentlemen it is to be said this is the last box in this case big shot of david b and we have not hit our showcase card yet come on baby come on baby Hold on, we put the Admiral, we put the Admiral in the wrong, st wrong stack. Stand by. Mining Guild TIE Fighter. <gasps> oh, Redemption and the Seasoned Stormtrooper. Last pack, ladies and gentlemen. If you believe 
Now is the time to tell me in the comment section. It is time to share this video on a social media platform anywhere where you check out TCG or Star Wars Unlimited related content. <sighs> we got the wolf and the Rebel Pathfinder. Thank you so much for hanging out. Until next time, you all know me. My name is Josh. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. And look at that. The Luke Skywalker hit. Let's go. Congratulations, David. All this is coming your way. If you want a box opening and you're a channel member, reach out to me on Discord or hometowntcg at gmail.com. We'll get you pricing all set up and ready to go. All right, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye. Come on.